Hey everyone, in today's video I'm going to teach you how you can get a RPM signal off of a Cummins um, strictly from the alternator. All you need is a specific style of gauge that sources the signal from what's known as the W terminal on the alternator. And uh, this particular gauge that I have in my setup cost me about 75 bucks. It's made by VDO. Um, it has, I think, six dip switches on the back. Um, which is used to determine how many poles the alternator has that um, you're sourcing the signal from. On my particular setup, it's uh, dip switch number five that is turned on and the rest of them are off. And according to the literature, dip switch number five represents 12 pole alternator. So it seems like it's giving me a, a pretty close signal to what the uh, engine is actually running at. So um, I'll, I'll show you what that looks like shortly. But first, I'd like to show you how I have it hooked up to the alternator. All right, so obviously I've got a few things to update you on since the last video. Um, I know it's been a few weeks. Progress has been really slow but steady. Uh, anyways, here's the gauge that I'm running. Like I said, it's a VDO uh, 4000 RPM alternator specific um, marine application tachometer. And uh, it's got three posts on the back, one for uh, 12 volts, one for ground, and one for the signal. And like I said, the dip switches. So let me show you where I source the signal from. Okay, so here's the back of my alternator. I'm gonna have to remove this cover to show you exactly, but this wire right here uh, goes in and ties onto one of the four outer terminals uh, that go around um, underneath the cover of this. And, uh, I believe three of them are actually confirmed to be the W terminal that you can source the signal from. Let me pop this cover off and show you exactly what that looks like. All right, to remove the cover, you need a 12 millimeter bolt to remove the two nuts off of the post. And you need an eight millimeter socket to remove the three nuts off of the uh, rear posts here and also the one screw which has a grounding strap that goes to the post. Don't lose that. First things first, make sure that your battery is disconnected before you disconnect the uh, main power lead. All right, and here is the W terminal that I am sourcing the signal for for my alternator driven tachometer and i'll show you what the signal looks like here in just a minute um, i do also want to point out that i have installed in here um, the transpo um, voltage regulator and this is a 24 valve cummins alternator i've only seen um, instructions on how to do this for a, a 12 valve alternator which has the two posts right here instead of the plug right here. I'm gonna let you guys know right now that this plug is that post and the wires uh, attach correspondingly. So on a 12 valve, the orange wire goes on this side up here and the green one goes down here. And uh, on a 24 valve, it's the exact same. If you look, I have these two wires right here. The orange one goes to the terminal that is on the right hand side facing the passenger if you're facing the front of the car and the green one goes on the left hand side and you also have to tap in an, a key on 12 volt source to the orange wire in order to excite the alternator and that's how you install well there's also the uh the red wire back here connects to that screw which gives it a 12 volt source when it's running so that's how you hook up the independent voltage regulator and this terminal will get you the alternator signal. There is another terminal here. Um, that one doesn't show the same AC voltage as this one or the other two that are on here. There's one over here and there's one down here as well. And these two along with this one up here all show seven volts AC, seven and a half volts AC when it's running, um, this one shows three. So I would recommend using these, these instead of this one. I'm not sure why that one's different, but it is. 
I'm gonna go ahead and pop the cover back on now and turn the car on and show you how the RPM gauge uh, reads the signal. Um, but I do want to let you know first that this uh, this guy, I believe it's called the Transpo 8315 voltage regulator. It's it's real real cheap. You can get it, I think, for like under 40 bucks off eBay. And it uh, regulates the voltage to like 14 and a half volts uh, for the charging system. So it seems like it's going to work out great. And it does ordinarily come with a um, mounting plate on the back of it. I tore it off because I wanted to fit it under the cover. And it works okay. So... Uh, just to let you know, in case you want to hide yours, you can do that. And uh, let's get the cover installed now. All right, I'm just going to give you a view from the outside of the cover one more time of the wiring for the voltage regulator, the orange wire goes to the right hand side of the plug the green wire green wire goes to the left hand side of the plug the orange wire you have to tap in and a key on um, 12 volt source to excite the alternator to get it to start charging and then this other wire is my tachometer signal off the w terminal well i figure i'll run you through um pretty much update you on everything that I've been working on over the last three or four weeks, whatever it's been. Um, to start with, I've got my battery mounted. I'm gonna go ahead and throw the positive terminal on there right now so I can show you everything else. Uh, I'm gonna be working on the cooling fan um, circuit today. The tail lights do work. I'll show you that in a minute. And I've got seats. They're a boat seat, like you'd see on a pontoon boat. Um, and the gauges, let's see. This is where I've really been working on the last couple days, the wiring. I know it looks like a bit of a mess in there right now, but uh, I just need to throw some zip ties on some things, but check it out. The outer gauges here are completely mechanical. They don't have lights or anything, so. Um, these three holes are for my fuel level, uh, water temp, and voltage. I have a backup little voltmeter right here, which is my cell phone chargers as well. Um, but check it out. Let's see. And I will go ahead and start it. That's pretty cool, huh? That uh, pull lever actuates the um, fuel shutoff on the P-pump, so that's how you turn off these um, mechanical motors. And I did, I don't know if you guys noticed or not, get some switches installed, so they control a variety of things. One of them's gonna be for headlights, one of them's gonna be for the fan that's gonna run my little uh, defroster setup here, and one of them controls all the gauges as well as the alternator excite circuit. And um, the other two are stumping me right now. I, I'll get back to you on that. Uh, I haven't installed these gauges yet because I did order a trim panel, a nice little polished aluminum one that's gonna go all the way across the dash here. And I'm gonna have to uh, drill holes in it in order to run the gauges through it. So I'm gonna leave the gauges out until that gets here so I can trace these holes out on it and hopefully make it a little easier. Anyways, let me show you the rest of what I've been working on. Tail lights are working. I've got a bolt wedged in there holding the pedal down just to show you, but those are good to go. Another thing I'm gonna work on today is a circuit for the headlights. That should be pretty easy. And um, I need to make a bracket for that mechanical shutoff that I showed you. You can see it's right here. 
and I intend to make a bracket that mounts off of the pump to support it so that um, it makes its operation a little smoother. And uh, that's the plan for today. So, oh yeah, I did get my fuse box installed right here. And uh, obviously I've got my main power wires running down the frame here. And I've got grounds from the frame to the body and the frame to the motor and the frame to the battery. So we're pretty much set up there. I do intend to get some more of these seats and stick them in the back row um, so I can haul more people around. But other than that, um, that's I think about all I've got for you guys today. Uh, I know it's going to be a quick video, but uh, I'm going to get some more work done on this thing and hopefully get it driving. So I'll catch you guys next time. Bye. Another item on my checklist for today is going to be the um, heater core setup for our defroster. This big line that I've got running right here is just a loop right now that goes from the top of the head down to the um, water pump outlet here. And essentially what I'm going to do is just cut them and shorten them up and run them to the uh, bulkhead fittings that I've got uh, running through the firewall back there. I don't know if you can see them. There's one up here and one down lower. I'll give you a view of what those look like from the inside right now. Basically my plan is, there's the other one, right here. I'm gonna make a mount for this. It's gonna mount up here in some fashion, like that. The fan will mount to this as well, this little guy. This little fan will mount to it. It will be our defrost fan, or heater fan essentially, which will run off of one of those switches like I said. And uh, this is gonna be the manual on-off valve to control uh, the hot water flow. I might add a push-pull cable to this as well, or I might just make it accessible to do it by hand. Anyways, uh, that's the plan for the heater setup. I figure if it blows hot air up here under the dash, that's where all these vents are. Um, and hopefully we'll get a little defrost action on those early morning drives to the lake. So that's the plan and uh, yeah, we'll catch you guys next time. Okay, so in case anybody is wondering, this is the gauge that I bought. I hope it's not blurry, but it kind of looks like it is. 4,000 RPM VDO, $75. Um, this is, it says it's VDO Alentair Black 4,000 RPM. 3 and 3 eighths diesel tachometer alternator 12 volt that's the one i purchased there is a lot of different brands out there that you can use so uh it's really up to you this is a quick look at the instructions in case anybody is curious the ones that i got with my gauge uh was only half of this information so This shows you where the three connections are on the back of the gauge and the dip switches. And the second page tells you the dip switch settings. Like I said earlier, uh, number five on and all others off indicates a 12 pole alternator. Initially I had it set for four poles because that's all I counted on the back of the alternator. Uh, and that was completely wrong. But uh, yeah, it, it can also um, run off of a pulse generator if you want to go that direction. I don't know anything about that, so I can't give you any advice, but that's about it.